Welcome to the 905 Podcast. I'm your girl, Savannah. And I'm Charles. Today on the Raptors 905 Podcast, we're talking to our newest face, Jaron Cumberland. Now, Kissy, tell me what you know about him. We got a really solid guard here who's, who's played his, his four years at the University of Cincinnati. He is going to add uh, some dynamic play. He's a vet as far as, you know, college life, I would say. Um, and he's going to be able to shoot it and get to the rim and defend and do whatever the 905 need him to do as he, they move into trying to win this championship. And I know that he's coming to us from the Rio Grande Valley Vipers. Uh, and I'm excited. He's played a few games for us on the 905 so far. So far, so good. Obviously, still very fresh, learning a lot. So I'm excited to pick his mind because he has had quite the college career. And I can't wait to talk about it with him. Let's welcome Jaron to the show. Joining us now is Jaron Cumberland, newest face of the Raptors 905. Jaron, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. That's good. That's good. I'm looking forward to talking because you've had quite the basketball career leading up to where you are today. But, you know, I will let Charles kick us off with the first question here. Jaron, listen, inquiring minds want to know, what's your favorite color? <laughs> My favorite color? <laughs> uh, not going to lie, it's red. I, it's I red. did like blue. Yeah, it's red. I did like blue, but I'm, I, I changed it to red. That's a good answer. That's that's a good right? that's a good answer. <laughs> and when you, when you think about your history of the teams you played for, there's been red throughout. So there's something there. There's something the universe is talking to you through your colors. That's amazing. Yes, um, for sure. Take us through that universe. You know, Wilmington, Ohio guy. Talk about basketball life. Um, growing up, how how did you come? How did you get into the game? Um, my dad. He was really just like he was really big and. Uh, pushed me at a very young age and like growing up in the middle of nowhere, like Wilmington, Ohio is like, it's just a small town. And uh, just all the hard work and everything, just putting in and being able to get like where I'm at now is just like, it's like a dream come true because it's like, you really have to put the work in. That's big time. And you've clearly done that all the way through, you know, the, the young ages. And now you're in Wilmington. How many people, how many people uh, populate that town? Do you know? I don't know, but I mean. But it's small. Probably, yeah, you see the same people all around there. Right. So you're, okay. you're, you're a megastar is what you're saying. You're <laughs> in between uh, Cincinnati, where you ended up, and, and the Buckeyes. How did you decide how, where you were going to go and, and navigate that process? Um, it wasn't, I mean, that wasn't a hard, it wasn't a hard pick between them because my dad, he was like a huge Michigan fan. So he didn't like the Buckeyes. So um, Cincinnati, uh, they actually showed their loyalty to me and everything as the time they was recruiting, to, recruiting me and everything at the time. Um, and it was just the biggest, like, I, I believe that was the biggest uh, thing that meant to my mom, my dad, and me at the at the moment. So that was, like, their loyalty and how much they wanted me and showed. That's the biggest thing that meant something to me. It made me choose Cincinnati. Sav, that loyalty. All... Sorry, I was going to say, Sav, that, that rivalry is real. That Michigan-Ohio State rivalry is real. Oh, yeah. Yes, I, I grew up with it. Oh, yeah. Jeez. I was going to say, you always got to go to the school that shows you the most love and, like, you know, loyalty as well. Like, if they're pursuing you as a high school athlete coming out right from the jump, they're very interested and they're going to treat you right in college, in which they did. But we'll get there in just a second. You know, I want to like, break down how did you, you know, get started? Where did the love of the game first come from? It really came from just... I'll say, like, just playing outside, like, with all the older guys, like my cousins and stuff, just playing outside with them. Um, my dad, he was a real big competitor, so just seeing him play, watching him play basketball and um, just learning stuff, and it just made me love the game. And just being, like, just hate losing and everything. Like, even at a young age, I just hated losing after seeing my dad, how big of a competitor he is. 
it was just made me love the game even more. And after that, like I, I quit playing like other sports and everything just because I love basketball so much. What other sports were you playing before? Um, I was playing baseball. I was a pitcher and uh, I played football and I was a running okay. back. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Big wait, time. You, didn't, you didn't transfer pitching to quarterback? I ended up being a quarterback like earlier, like, I mean, later, actually, when I was like almost about to quit, like when I was done with football. So I probably played quarterback for like two years. So so when were you done with football? Like what grade was that? Um, it was my freshman year, actually. Okay. I stopped playing it. Baseball, I quit playing like later, like earlier, earlier, like probably like my sixth grade year. I gave that up. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's good. Like it's good to play multiple sports and then like really commit yourself to 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 one sport or basketball per se, because um, you know it really just makes you want the sport that you're pursuing that much more. Because you know what else is out there at the same time. Um, that's uh that's good. So you so while you were at uh, your high school, you had a lot of big games, and one game you dropped a fifty piece. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that. How were you feeling that night? It was it was senior night and it was just like I gave like I gave the school everything I had and it was just something to go out with. I wanted to go out with a bang, so it was just something to leave a mark with scoring the most that night and um my teammates and everybody, they was really like leading me on to like that like if you want to go reach this, go ahead, like we were just like they cheered me on and everything. So just having a team that was like on the same page as me and cheered me on and was just nothing but respect for me. And they, I had nothing but respect for them and they understood. So I know you're, you're being modest. You, you dropped 50 here, you know, your player of the year, ACC player of the year, tournament MVP. What's one of your, before getting to the pros, one of your uh, biggest achievements, accomplishments, like what, what's one of the things you're most proud of? Um, I'm gonna say winning the player of the year, my junior year. Um, just because like, I, it wasn't one of my mindsets that I, like, I could achieve. Like I didn't know I could achieve it at the time. And then um, just knowing that it was something that I was running for, it was just at the moment, like I can really do this. So it was just like, I was really proud of myself and really shocked myself to know I can get that. But um, I'll say that and probably, i say that's probably number one, but winning most of the, probably going to the championship almost every year in the conference tournament. What's what's that feeling like? What are those conference tournaments like? Like gotta be memorable, gotta be pretty special, right? Before COVID obviously and the arenas were crazy. Talk about that. Like, what does that feel like to step out on the floor? It was, I mean, it was crazy. I mean, it was, it was a fun feeling um, knowing that you're going, like you're going against one of the rivals that was in your conference. You had to go against Houston and knowing that like they're scouting our team is just how we're scouting them. So it was just like, it was just who, who's ever going to be on their A game even more. So that was just the games like those would be the, like the most funnest games. What do you think? I'm curious. What do you think the scout was on you? I don't. Don't. I don't even know. I still. I ask people don't, that. All don't the time. let him touch the ball. Deny <laughs> him. Deny him. Deny him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't let me get in the lane. Some of the people said, "Don't let me get in the lane. Don't let me." Uh, just don't even let me try to score again in the game. Like it was, it's crazy hearing some people answers and just seeing what they was trying to do. Cause most don't of the guys that I play, most of the guys that I played against, um, they're in the bubble right now and just talking to them and just going back on memories, just laughing and stuff. It's fun. It's fun to talk about. It's funny you say that. Cause I actually wanted to ask you, like, has there been, like, have you crossed paths? with anybody on the 905 team first, and if not just not 905 team, anybody else in the bubble? Um, I haven't played nobody on the 905. Um, 
other than that, well, the recent team I was with, uh, RGV, they mm-hmm. was actually uh, Armani Brooks. And there's a lot of other uh, guys that are actually down here from, uh, like, the conference that I was in. They actually – like I speak to them all the time, and it's fun seeing them. That's pretty incredible. That's actually interesting that you get that feedback from those guys, like how they might have been guarding you and so on and so forth. That's a that's a unique perspective. Now, you talked about, and I'm going to ask you because you, you brought it up, you were playing at another team at RGV. You're now with the Toronto Raptors 905, Raptors 905, which, you know, believe me, everybody's happy to have you here. Um, what was that experience like for you, you know, sort of going, hey, listen, the, the one good thing is you didn't have to travel very far. But uh, right now you got the same room. I hope that executive suite that you're you're lounging in. Um, yes. What was that experience like, moving from team to team, midway through, or really towards the end? Um, I mean, it's my first time experiencing like the trade and everything. Um, it kind of messed with me a little bit, but then it was like, is this is what it's about and everything, and. Um, it actually gave me a, another mindset and just being in the bubble, like it, it takes a toll on your mind and everything just going on, going with everything and being away from your family and everything. But, uh, being with 905, it actually, um, <clears throat> just being with the team and everybody and the coaching staff, um, they actually brought me in and I felt comfortable and it was just felt like, it was just, I don't know, like everybody's just on the same page and it, I felt I felt comfortable and being with the team now is is making it fun. Shout outs to uh, Coach Watumbo, who, who does a great, he's doing a fantastic job in the bubble right now, uh, leading that team. I actually had a chance to, to text with him the other day and mention that to him. He's doing a great job with that crew and, and so you're gonna fit in nice and I know you're in good hands. Um, and thanks for sharing that experience because I think oftentimes people, you know, think, well, you're, you're a pro player, you're in the bubble, you got everything you want. It should be easy. You should have nothing to complain about. But it's you're a human being first and foremost. You're, you know, you're a young man trying to figure this out. So I appreciate you sharing your thoughts there. Um, you, I'll say this before I, I turn it over to Sav is uh, that your story is far from written. So keep your head up. Yes, sir. Yeah, I, you touched on a few things that, you know, feel free to, you know, talk about to how, however you're comfortable with. But, you know, for me, talking about mental health and just like, you know, and it's just, it's not, it doesn't mean like anything's wrong per se. It's just like, you know, positivity and like really keeping your head up in these situations in a bubble. Like, how has that been overall, not just for you in particular, but do you feel like, you know, it's a different situation. It's a, it's a unique environment where you're literally like, um, What's that movie called, Charles? <laughs> the like the 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 man that's in a bubble, and yeah. living in a the Truman Show. The Where Truman Show. The fishbowl. All... Yeah, I love that movie. Do you know that? Do you know that movie, Jared? I haven't. I, I might need to watch it. I'll watch it. You tonight. need to watch that. It's, you need you to might watch have been the too young Show. for that. Don't date yeah. me, Savannah. That's an old. That's an old movie. It's a Jim Carrey. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Carry on. So it's almost like you guys are in your own little Truman Show, and other everybody from the outsider is just watching in. Um, like what you guys are doing, but what's it like to be in the bubble and to stay positive in these unique circumstances? I mean, um, the biggest thing, I mean, I mean, I guess I, I know most of the guys, I mean, it probably takes a toll on them that they don't get to see their family or anything. Uh, the biggest like positive thing, just being with the guys that like the team, like that's the biggest thing. Um, just because you might not like you might wake up a day and just be like, man, like I'm still in the bubble. Like you're just seeing the same stuff. Like I can't see my family, nobody like that. So um, just seeing and being around the team and just like being able to laugh and make jokes and the biggest part of just winning. That's that's the most that's that's the most fun. Like that's, that's what makes the most fun out of it, too. Winning. And I mean, just you go ahead. Ahead. Um, just winning, like just having fun on the court and being able to laugh and on the court and in the locker room, just, it makes it, uh, like, it makes it way better. Absolutely. I mean, winning's always just fun. And, and I know that the 905 mantra this past year is literally 
just win. Like, it's as simple as that. They've really been preaching that this season. And, you know, I know you've only been with the team for a few games now, but what has been the biggest difference that you felt between this Raptors 905 team and your last team, Rio? Um, I would just say really just the chemistry of the team. I'll say everyone's like on the same page and uh, everyone's like, everyone's on the same page and everybody wants the other person to succeed. So I'll just say everyone's trying to help everyone be comfortable and understand the game a lot easier. That's that's really good to hear. And, I've, you know, I've heard that, like, Matt Morgan has been super helpful in practice. And, you know, a lot of the guys are very selfless. Like, a lot of them talk about, like, the selfless nature of this team. So I'm happy that you're feeling it as well. Something that was interesting that got brought up in a press conference was um, – so, man, so GM, Chad Sanders, he said that he passed you in the hallway um, – at like 4 p.m. right before, like literally just an hour before it was announced that you're coming to the Raptors 905. Like that to me speaks volumes about the bubble situation. And he knew, he said that he actually wanted to tell you, by the way, in an hour, you're going to be mine. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but, he actually texted me and said something like, uh, well, when the trade happened and everything, he texted me and said, I just passed you in the hallway. I was going to say something to you, but you was, was listening to music and I was just going to let you just get a call. He's like, I didn't want to bother you. But, um, it's, I mean, I, I, I like the, the new uh, organization and everything. And I'm really glad. What would have been your reaction? Out of curiosity, what would have been your reaction? I would have been, I don't even know. I would have probably, I would have probably thought he was joking at first. And then I would have probably had to like just see him being serious. And then I would have been like mind blown. But don't lie. I, you, would I, I just, called, you would have called the league and said, tampering. He's tampering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, a word? <laughs> I, I have a question for you about that, though. Like, what that transition, how's that been? It sounds like it's been very positive. And is there anyone in particular that sort of helped you? You know, is there any players that are like, you know, say, hey, this is what you got to be doing next, or I mean, you're obviously a very intelligent basketball player, and you know, for the most part, it's all kind of the same in many ways. But how, who's been sort of helping you through this process? Um, I mean, most of the guys on the team has like just knowing because, um, just knowing because they've been they've been here from day one and training in the training camp and everything, so they know what coach wants and just um. Like talking to Gary Payton, he uh, he actually he like tells like I'll be I'll ask him a question or something like that just just to make sure like I'm on the same page as him if we're on defense or offense or whatever. So it just keeps us like instead of making a mistake and just keeps us looking better as a team. Um, almost every guy on the team I ask I ask a question about from the game or something like that just to stay on track and everything but they all help me uh, they're all fun they're all fun and caring guys so, on your free time who are you hitting up who am i hitting up on my free time yeah um i'll say my family and my girlfriend really that's it this is we're getting close to playoff time it's playoff time is that is how is the prep going is are we there yet um, what's the mindset and, and, and how are you feeling about that getting ready to move into the bubble one and done, which you know well because you've done these tournaments, you know, Cincinnati life, you, you know what these are about. How What value can you add and how is the prep going? Um, just being on my, uh, just being on the scouting report, knowing everything, um, knowing what coach needs for me, doing my role and uh, not trying to do too much of it. Um, that's the biggest thing, and uh, just prep wise, we're we're keep doing the same thing, and just as an older team, um, just watching film and making sure you got you understand everything. That's yeah. fair. That's that makes a lot of sense. Go ahead, Charles. Sorry. No, I was gonna say, like, I love you know watching your tape and watching your college games. You play with such you know, you play at your pace, right? Uh, and you can see that over that time, those years, you played all those big games. 
has the game sort of slowed down for you? You know, like, you know what I'm talking about? There's points when you're, as a basketball player, Sav knows this too, where the game's like going crazy. And then there's a point where you just slow down. I didn't get it till I was like 27. <laughs> you know, I was old, not playing pro, but like, you know, you just sort of had a different understanding of it. Where are you at in that process? And have all those big games sort of helped you ex- expedite that process? Um. I definitely, I mean, as the years went on and uh, understanding the game and everything as the college went on, um, <clears throat> it, it, I mean, slowed my game down a lot and understood the game and uh, didn't let nobody, like, speed me up. Definitely from now, uh, it's definitely a faster-paced game. And um, I need to so – I, I, I just need to learn how to how the pace and everything goes – and uh, still learning a little bit about that, but um, that's something that I'm definitely going to focus and try to change. Try to increase yeah. your say, you're saying like you're trying well, like, to increase your pace to to adapt. Yeah, just try to like increase it to just be able to play my own instead of just speeding up or just playing at one pace the whole time. No, that's good. And Charles, we got another one who's being too humble. He's still being too humble. Yeah, I mean, you know, like again, I watch I watch your your Cincinnati. We've been tracking you in the bubble, and like you know, you got a lot too. You got a million and one accolades, my friend. And mm-hmm. I I think it's an interesting point though because you you know, and I, and I we all understand this. Like the game is faster, and and those who adapt to that and can sort of settle in, you know, obviously do well, and you're gonna get there, and you you're already aware of it, which I think is valuable, um, but. But I think it's just so important that, you know, you just sort of keep that, you know, in your back pocket, like you already have it. I, you know what, to be honest, I'm not worried about you. So feel free to brag um, on this podcast. Feel free to let the world know that you are. Who you are. Because in five (laughs) years, in five years, what are we going to be saying about you? Tell me the story that's written. Um, Just, I mean, I mean, I want to, I want you to, I want you to say like, I was just a humble guy and that, I really uh, just a humble guy and that, I mean, just wanted to win. And that um, just being traded from, I mean, just to have a story is just from being getting traded from the Vipers to 905 and just adapting just to the system and understanding everything and fitting, fitting in with the organization. It was just like, I believe the best thing. But I mean, that's what I would want the story to be written about because it's a process. And that's one thing I definitely did learn. Absolutely. Um, I want to rewind a little bit going back to your um, university days. And I'm going to just read this stat line because I got to get this right. Uh, You complete your career as only one of four players in school history to surpass 1,700 points, 400 assists, with along, sorry, along with Oscar Robinson, I'm sorry, excuse you, um, who had yeah, no, no big deal. Po- I know, right? No big deal. Just, just, a, just a great, just a legendary player. Um, you know, that's great company that you're in with here when you when we have to talk about Oscar Robinson and you in the same sentence when it comes to college basketball. So I mean, you know, talk about how you were in your groove in college and you know obviously things have to translate maybe to to the professional game but you you're also just starting you're just starting so you know what's it like to hear that your name is in great company i mean first off i mean i'm just blessed to be able to even play at cincinnati and get an opportunity to be on the court and wear the like cincinnati across my chest the same as oscar robinson I mean, um, being able to, like, just going to Cincinnati and, and, like, being around Coach Cronin, who recruited me, he, uh, he definitely helped me take my game to another level and helped me have the confidence and just understanding the game more. Um, that That's what really helped me become the player that, like, made me take my game to another level and just have a lot of confidence. Um, understanding what Coach Cronin wanted from me. So, if you were not playing basketball, <clears throat> what would you be doing? Uh, man, I ain't right. 
I saved a hard hitting one for a little later <laughs> in the episode. I got you. I'll say uh I'll probably be I don't know. I would say probably like training kids or something. Like just wanting to train, be around kids or something. Like I think that like makes my day even better just um just hanging around kids and being able to like be myself and joke around with them and just seeing I can change a a, a kid's like a like a child's life because you don't know what they have going on in their life and stuff. So um just being able to give back and be able to do something it I mean it means a lot. Would you teach? Yeah. I, w- I would teach. I would probably like teach or just like I mean, well, train them like being able to make them a better like whatever they want to like basketball. I mean, train them as a ba- like a basketball player or something. Just making them a better per- like player. Darren, you now you're mentioning okay, so you're mentioning your family. You'd hit up on your free time just to check in with them, uh, and now you know it's kind of an, a community involvement aspect that you'd want to just give back and teach the youth of the next generation you know i it really speaks to someone's values when those are the first things out of their out of their mouth when they're talking about you know what they want to do um how much do you value family and community i want to hear it straight from you i mean i value it a lot i mean just growing up i mean just always i'm a mama's boy so Oh, that, snap. I mean, there it is. I had to, there it is. I had to talk to my mom almost every day. Um, I got two older sisters, and just being around, like, I got younger, like, nieces and nephews. So just being, like, being able to see them and help them, and then, like, other kids around that look up to me and stuff like that, <clears throat> like, it means, uh, it means a lot because me being, I used to see myself as one of them kids that, go up and, oh, you're a big time basketball player and want to talk to them and stuff. So just knowing the feeling and everything, it means a lot. And being able to help and give back, I mean, it makes me feel a better person. Tell me a little bit about your family. Go into that a little bit more. What does your sisters do? Do they ever play basketball? Do your parents play Um, basketball? My mom and dad, they, my dad, he played basketball. Um, My mom, she played basketball and uh, softball. And that carried with my sisters. They played softball and basketball. Um, I really, uh, my sisters, they, uh, like I said, they have my, like, they have uh, nieces. And, like, well, I have nieces and nephews that they play sports and everything. So just seeing them uh, play sports and being able to love the game, I mean, it makes, like, it makes me happy and just being able to teach them and tell them stuff. Because just seeing all the work that it takes to get here, it's it's a lot. How competitive? I, oh, go ahead. I was gonna say, how competitive was family game night? It was. It it it'd get bad sometimes. Like if I lose, I'm getting teased and from my from my sisters and stuff. So we're getting little arguments and stuff. My dad, he he let me win because he know I hate losing. <laughs> you gotta talk to Trace when you can about his older sisters because like he played against them and like one of them was a WNBA player. Um and and he said like yeah they were the worst when they won. <laughs> they they start bragging and just they know how to push their button and just make me mad. See, I was going to ask good. that because I know they beat up on you, so good on them. <laughs> and I was la- I was laughing to myself here because I'm thinking you started talking about your dad and you kind of didn't say anything about your mom. So it was, I'm, okay, I'm waiting to ask. And then it, uh, lo and behold, mama's boy, he's been holding on to it. So I respect it. So am I. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so your sisters beat on you. We got that. And they play <laughs> softball. That's good to know. Um uh, and you played baseball. If you could go back and play a different sport, so you can't play basketball, which of the two baseball, football, would you have picked? I would have picked football. Yeah, football. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't like uh, standing in the heat or nothing. But I would have picked football. It felt. It was just a better sport, and I felt like uh, I had more fun with it. 
who was your favorite like basketball player of all time? Who is the goat to you? Um, I'll say it's Jordan, but Kobe's like Kobe's right there with him. Yeah. Like I always uh, grew up watching like videos and uh, <clears throat> just watching videos of Jordan and Kobe. Um, just like the comparison of everything. So that was just like something I grew up always wanting to watch and just their motivation and determination. So did, Jordan and – go ahead. Please, I was just going to ask, did you pat in your game after any of those two or was it somebody else? Um, I, I didn't I didn't even – I'll say like I grew up watching Paul Pierce too. I like – I like Paul Pierce. Um, I didn't really pat my game after like nobody really. Uh, it was just like I just like their attitude. And, like that's like the biggest thing I look for like on the court, just their attitude and the determination of what of what they was wanting and what they was like going to get on the like on the court. So it was so I was going to ask you because <clears throat> you know it's one thing to declare who the goat was or is. And it's another to be like personal favorite. So is Paul Pierce your personal favorite? No, yeah, I'll say Kobe was. Kobe, like okay. Kobe, like he's like my personal favorite. I like KD too. Oh, okay. Okay. What shoes do you wear? Because like you mentioned Jordan, Kobe, KD, and they all have shoes. So whose shoes are you wearing? Uh, I wear Jordans most of the time to walk around in. Smart. Nice. Kobe's. I, I mean, I like Kobe's. Um, it's just more like low cuts. I don't really like low cuts, really. But I play in them most of the time. You don't like low cuts? Yeah. I mean, like, <clears throat> like I had, like, experience when I was younger. And I just, like, sprained my ankle or something. But it was like I was done wearing Kobe's. But they're still my all-time favorite shoes. Yo, Charles. I you rate him. Made, I rate you, him. You just made Savannah's day. You because nobody says. No, because everybody's like, I love low cuts. I'm like, I don't like low cuts. I think it's mid cuts or high tops. Like that is, that's, that's it. That's all for me. Because like, same thing. You roll your ankle so easily. Like, don't get me wrong. Like Kobe's are like, they're nice. They're, they're flashy. But playing wise, give me all the support you can. <laughs> yes, most definitely. Yo, who's, who's the player? you know, that you most look forward to playing against you when you when you get your opportunity, you get into the league, you know, full time. Who's that player that like I want to guard him or I want him guarding me? Um, I mean, anyone really that's at that next level, like because they they got there. And I mean, the biggest one is probably LeBron just being able to. I mean, everyone like sees him on TV and seizing like all of these records and everything so being able to get a chance to have him guard me or me guarding him would be like a real like like a learning experience and something i can tell my family okay hold on yeah so co coach calls a <clears throat> play let's say you're playing for coach kissy i call you know quick whatever i call an action you get the ball lebron is now guarding you you're supposed to flip it to somebody else. Are you saying, Coach, Coach, I got this and going to work? Or are you running the play? Oh, you're trying to get me in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I'm asking you to play for me. <laughs> not I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a run, I'm not in the world, NBA. Don't listen for this part. Just this part. Go ahead. I mean, I would I would probably, uh, if he ran the play, I mean, I'm going to have to run the play, but I'm going to try to get an opportunity in, the, in one point in the game to – at least say, try to get a buck. At least get a bucket on him. Say you like, hey, wait, you're, you're running the play, okay? And then the person that you're supposed to pass it to is like heavily guarded. At the same time, you see an open lane, like I'm you keep just it and I'm lane. going to score. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> there the you go. <laughs> let, let, let me summarize. If Coach gives me the ball and LeBron is guarding me, I don't care if Steph Curry's open. I'm shooting that is what you're saying, and I respect that because you know you gotta shoot your shot. Yes, most tell definitely. Me, tell me, tell me this. You get a three on three team. Who are the other two you're putting on your team? Man, are you I gotta take KD. Okay. Um uh, 
I say, man, I might. And, and by the way, you can't pick me, so you know. Yeah. Yes. So we're both I'm off out. the table. <laughs> Too highly skilled. It'd be yeah, unfair. Yeah, assume I'm out. Assume Gotta I'm give him a chance. It, but... Yeah. I'll say uh, <laughs> maybe Kyrie. Yeah, like Kyrie. That's just my two favorite. I mean, that I would pick on my team. They're they're fun watching and everything. I want to go back a little bit. Um, COVID hits. It's your senior season, um, and it ends differently, obviously, than you expected it to. How did you react and manage the challenges that came with that? It kind of, to be honest, it kind of didn't hit me until probably like probably like a week or two after, like when they say like, we're not gonna have a March Madness or nothing like that. It was just like, you gotta be like, that's crazy. Like, are you kidding me? Um, But it was just like a mind blowing part. And then it was just like, I'm just in my room for a week or two. And it just like, it just starts hit me. Like basketball's real life over. Like you like, this is your senior year. So it was just like, um, I just didn't get to finish what I wanted to, what I came back for. So it was just, it was, it was a real crazy moment at the time. And like, you got your degree, eh? Yes. That's actually a rare, like in a lot of situations, a lot of people declare early. What do you, what did you study? Criminal justice. Why, why criminal justice? Uh, I'll say it was just one of the like, like one of the guys that I came in with. He was he he studied it too, so it was just like one of the things. I was just like, oh, you're gonna study that? All right, I will too. All right, I have to tell you, our friend over here, Charles Kissy, he's actually a police officer himself. No, long time, long time ago in another life, I I did do that. I police for ten years in Toronto. When you, when you get to come to the six if that ever works out that way next season, depending on what happens, but I was there. Um, so that criminal justice degree, I have something very similar, uh, really interesting. We'll definitely have some chats about that. Now, I'm guessing that you took it, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, because you knew the beatings you were getting from your sisters were not right, and you had to check out <laughs> You know how things are going. No, you're lost. <laughs> now you're like, hey, you tell your sisters I know my rights. But that's <laughs> honestly, I think um, you should be, you know, excited, proud, whatever. I know your your family is that you know that you were able to to finish and, and accomplish that. I think that's another thing beyond you talking about being a mentor. It's another thing beyond being a basketball player that that kids are going to look up to. That you're a highly educated human being. And that, you know, that's something for, for the young people to look at. So I applaud you for that as well. And, you know, you, again, you have so much in your toolbox right now that, you know, it's impressive. And that these young kids are going to grow up better than you, better than me, you know, as they continue to rise because of the stuff that you're doing. So keep that with you as well as you journey on, right? These young guys and girls are looking at you because of that. So uh, this is me giving you a, a slow clap because, you know, it's, it's, it's good. It's really, I'm, that, that makes my heart smile, you know? that other piece of it to see that balanced human being. You're an incredible pro athlete who's going to have a long career, but you're also, uh, you know, just a great human being who values education, values all the rest of it. So I'll get off my soapbox, Sav, onto you. Yeah, give them the flowers, man. Yo, these players, they yeah. deserve all the flowers. When you graduate a student athlete, you know how hard that is? People take uh, that for granted. People take that for granted all the time. Like, it's hard just to graduate without being an athlete let alone being a student athlete in a pandemic while trying to declare for the NBA draft. Like, tell us now through, walk us through that process of how you had to, you know, cope with the different type of uh, declaration for the NBA draft and what that entailed in, in working out for teams and stuff like that. Like, it was all kind of virtual, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all virtual. Um, you couldn't, I mean, I couldn't really fly out the, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't fly out to nowhere to, like work out or train so um staying in ohio and just training there it was just like oh like when COVID hit it was just really nothing was even like opening at all so at the time just having all the zoom calls with the coaches and being able to tell them i've been like telling them i've been training and stuff and that some of the spots like some of the gyms were wouldn't even open 
So being able not to go into the gym for a week or two and trying to figure out, oh, where can I get in the gym at? It was just like, it was real tough. Even like knowing you got to like, you got to work out during with, I mean, even knowing the NBA, like the draft is coming up and everything, you still have to work out, even though you got to figure something out. Oh, that's, that's, that's such a crazy, I mean, hopefully it doesn't happen again, you know, but, um, and, and people get this opportunity, but again, it's one of those things that it's harder than people can, can imagine, right. To figure that out. You've been sort of building your career to this point and all of a sudden you're doing it on zoom, <laughs> you know, you know, one yeah. can touch you, feel you ask you questions, that type of thing, you don't really get after it. You're having to do it on a camera. It, it is, it is a whole different experience for sure. Now you've survived draft night talk about that um i thought like it was just once i once i got once i got drafted and from for the g league and everything it was it was like it took weight off like it took weight off my shoulders and everything just knowing that i'm going and playing somewhere now and having knowing that i haven't played over a year which was crazy. So it was just like, man, like it's finally like it's back to playing basketball and doing something that I love to do. And it was just, I felt, I felt happy. I was excited and ready to play. And the bubble. Now, listen, you packed up from Ohio and, and by the way, I got to ask you about Chappelle. Are you a Chappelle fan? You know, he's out in Ohio. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, I know that. But uh, you're like, nah, Chappelle's not really from Ohio. Don't bring him up. Okay, <laughs> next question. Next question. I got you. So Charles, <laughs> Charles stays dating himself today. <laughs> I know. Jeez, I was like, Chappelle's old man. He lives on a farm. Anyway, <laughs> um, so the bubble. You packed your stuff from Ohio, where I was going. You know, I'm getting old. I forget where I'm going. But you had to bring one thing. What was it? What was the one thing you could not leave home without? PS5. It was I could I couldn't leave it. Saying that he's a gamer, Charles. It sounds like it. It sounds All right. like it. You know you're gonna have to tell us what you play, who you play against, like what games what's your top like three games on the PS5? I don't even have uh I have I mean I really play Fortnite. Oh okay. So that's like my like my really the only game I really play. But uh, I've really been I was like I just got into playing like two K, mm -hmm. and uh, some Call of Duty. Okay, okay, you you know you're gonna have to hit up Matt Morgan, right? All right, what what sport he uh, what game he play on there? He well he plays them all. He's actually a hardcore gamer. Like two K, that's his bread and butter. Like he wins literally like esports tournaments in two K. They say he streams or something like that, don't he? I think he what? He likes it, like streams on the internet or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like he's up there with like the esports scene. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I gotta hit him up so I can catch some dubs. He he is. See, that's the competitive nature. We're like we're telling you that he's like way up there. You're like, no, no, no. I gotta play. Like, I gotta take him down. I, I got <laughs> He's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know where he, where his room is. Actually, you don't even need to. You guys could do this on the net. See, I'm not a game. I'm old, but but <laughs> you know, you guys could do this and just play and let me know who wins that one. I'm I'm super yeah. interested now. It depends what games you play. Um, so I, if he I plays it, you in Fortnite, you got Fortnite, eh? Like that's that yeah, you're gonna just win that entire round. Yeah, I got that one down easily. But okay. other ones, he, he got it. <laughs> Get back on the show now. I know, right? We got a challenge. What so far this season has stood out to you? Like best moment so far in the 905 season or just like your 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 experience in the G League? Mm. I'll just say I mean, I had like two different experiences from Which like is the first yeah, so just being able to experience both sides and being able to really see what like what it's really like, and uh, 
it was actually, I mean, the experience that I was wanting is actually like, it's fun and just being able, knowing like what was coming out here and being able to win and being able to win and and um, knowing like the team, the team that uh, with 905 now, just knowing the older guys, they have experience and everything. I mean, it's just super fun. That's why, that's what was on my mind coming out here being with guys that are wanting to win and that like help you get comfortable because you know most guys they are like veterans and you know veterans make rookies do this and that so it's just like i wonder what what type of stuff they'd be doing but um the older guys they actually like like i said they make they make you feel comfortable and they really they give you what they learned and what they know about the game too. You're just lucky that you're in the bubble because they can't make you go get the Chick Fil A or the Starbucks or whatever it is. So you know, take it. And then next year you say, "Hey, I'm not a rookie anymore. It's good." Um, <laughs> Jared, I want to thank you, man. This has been really fun. I really appreciate you doing this for us. I appreciate you having me and uh, giving me the time to talk to you. Really appreciated getting to know Jaron a little bit better. You know, obviously, but a humble, humble guy. Really not making a big deal out of, like, being in company with Oscar Robinson uh, yeah. in uh, in college. But what what's your biggest takeaway, Charles? Well, most of us do that, right? Most of us have those types of college careers, so it's not a big yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. All, all the right? time. <laughs> Uh, you know what? Honestly, he's just he's finding his way. Like this was an interesting one to to listen to for me because he is figuring it out, right? You know, you you come into the bubble is already pandemics caused this crazy amount of stress and redirected many people's careers, and then you get traded on top of it. And you know, he's he's figuring it out, and he's such a competitive human that he he will you know at the end of the day he'll get where he needs to go. I liked hearing the fact that, you know, his college career was so phenomenal. But on top of that, you know, off the court, what a family, a mama's boy. He's a mama. He has to talk to moms every day. I love that. Um, and, you know, like just his competitiveness and also how the fact that he plays Fortnite. You know, I hope that him and Matt Morgan actually get to play against each other uh, soon. Listen, I'm saying we set that up live on pay-per-view podcast, wherever True. we right? True. True. Matt, you got called out when you hear this. You got called out. Make it happen. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you guys, the listeners, the viewers, for tuning in to another episode of your Raptors 905 podcast. <laughs>